talk about driving as a public health problem. I suppose most people think of it as a policing problem or a traffic problem or something of that order. Um, hope to show otherwise. And uh, in particular, I'm going to talk about uh, graduated driving license schemes, GDL, I'll probably refer to them as. Uh, I'm going to do this in the context of a work with a little research team. It's a London-based team. Nicola is the sort of lead person. And I draw attention to the team, not only with respect to them, but also to emphasize that um, I'm not necessarily an expert on all aspects of this problem. So I'm already warding off the questions that come at the end. Uh, um, I'm just, uh, uh, I just have a, a sort of walk-on part in the, uh, in the scheme in many ways. Okay, Northern Ireland, road deaths. Uh, good news and bad news. The bad news, I suppose, that there are lots of deaths. The good news is that uh, for many, many years, as the graph shows, the rate of casualties has been falling, though the background is a, is a, 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 is a screen grab from a Belfast Telegraph, which suggests that uh, last year, um, killed and seriously injured actually might have gone up, have gone up, in fact. You might remember there was a bit of flurry of activity in December and even in January of this year. Okay, so uh, there are lots of accidents. Anyone can have an accident, or so it seems. Uh, the problem with accidents is that when you look at patterns of accidents, you begin to see that there are particular subgroups who are more prone to having misfortunes uh, than others. And uh, in this case, one outstanding group who are subject to uh, 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 casualties are young people. Young people, of course, usually think of themselves as great drivers, and people like me as awful drivers. In my case, they're right. But in actual fact, there are very real problems with young, uh, young people driving. And uh, these kinds of stories, these are also screen grabs from across the UK, Scotland, Wales, and... Uh, uh, a recent story from, from Northern Ireland here. Uh, they're kind of familiar to you, and we all know about these teenagers who at holiday time and so on, they go out for a drive, they kill themselves, they kill their friends. Or sometimes, and sadly, as in the case of the, um, uh, uh, the, the woman on the, the, the right-hand side of the screen there, uh, relatives, and as you can see, she was charged with uh, dangerous driving. So young drivers are a problem, and we can represent that, again, in terms of figures. You can see there, uh, killed or seriously injured, this is from a PSNI report, uh, by different age groups. In fact, you see two problems there, but I'm only going to concentrate on one of them. First of all, as uh, all women know, men are a big problem, so there's a gender aspect to, to the the, uh, the crash problem. But above that, or intermingled with that, is, is an age problem, uh, markedly for males, uh, but also uh, for females. And um, uh, this is recognized not only in Northern Ireland, but across Europe, America, Australia, New Zealand, and, and probably other parts of the world. So all young drivers are at a very high risk of crashing. Uh, an OECD report published in 2006 suggested that uh, um, uh, a low young drivers constitute 27% of uh, driver fatalities. They only uh, constitute 10% of the driving population. And uh, a quote from the report that pose a greater risk than other drivers to themselves, their passengers, and the rest of us as well. In the UK, one in five young drivers crash within six months of obtaining a license. And uh, an another of these uh, grisly statistics, four people killed or seriously injured every day in crashes involving young drivers in the UK. A few more statistics relating to 2008-2010. Northern Ireland, you see, is uh, particularly badly off here. So uh, YD, young drivers, uh, account for... 17.5% uh, of all crashes during that period, 20.4% of casualties, 22% of, um, uh, of fatalities. Uh, things are not as bad in England and Scotland. Wales comes a little bit nearer to Northern Ireland, but Northern Ireland stands out there. Okay, so there are lots of young drivers. Lots of young drivers have lots of accidents. The problem is that uh, as a proportion of the driving population, young drivers are tiny. So they, they're accounting for, what was it, 
of fatalities, but they're not 22% of drivers. I couldn't actually dig out the uh, Northern Ireland figure. I'm sure it's there somewhere in the mass of information on the web, but I couldn't dig out the uh, precise figure for, for Northern Ireland. But you can see Scotland, 1.7%. Uh, 2.1% Wales, England, 1.7%, the whole UK figure of 1.7% of people with licenses are in that age group. So a small proportion of drivers accounting for a massive uh, negative impact, an impact not only on them and their families, but also, of course, on the NHS, enormous costs involved here. All right, so it's just a handful of people Joyriders, that's a good story for Northern Ireland. And indeed, when I was just searching through um, uh, the web for uh, newspaper stories, the first story I came up with was a Belfast Telegraph story about joyriders, one of whom had killed his passenger and so on. It would be uh, easy, maybe, to think, you know, uh, joyriders are responsible, minority are responsible for this. But sadly, it isn't the case, as I'll show. Um, the key factors here are age, why age matters, is maybe a problem in itself. I've suggested some factors there, exuberance, risk-taking, peer pressure, which probably is important, uh, thrill-seeking, and lack of experience, psychomotor skills, hazard perception, judgment, decision-making. I think anyone who drives knows that driving is first and foremost a social activity, interpreting what other people are likely to do, are doing, want to do, rather than a sort of motor activity or a physical activity of changing gears. And maybe young people just don't have those skills. This is a, a graph I've grabbed out of an RAC report. I think they've grabbed it out somewhere else, but they don't say where. And it shows very, very clearly that um, age is a problem. The age at which people have a license <laughs> is related to the probability of having accidents. So uh, a 60-year-old who's just started to drive is less likely to be involved in uh, a traffic accident than a 17-year-old, an 18-year-old less than a 17-year-old. So, However, it isn't just age. That's the red line. You concentrate on the green lines. It shows that experience matters too. But no matter how much experience uh, modifies and mollifies the crash risk, you can see that People who have licenses at early ages are always slightly worse than those who start driving later in life. So, as I've already suggested, most teens involved in fatal crashes, uh, they're not part of the wild bunch. Uh, they don't have prior violations. They don't have crashes on their record. Many model teens, you know, the kids who are doing well at school, who do well at school or university, who uh, engage in all the, the good and decent things of life are killed in car crashes. Uh, and although there are, is a, a disproportionate uh, rate of crashes among young drivers, uh, I should also draw attention to the fact that there is a sort of social deprivation effect, as with all accidents. In fact, accidents is a very funny term altogether. As with all accidents, there's a class gradient. Working class people, whatever they do, are more likely to be involved in accidents than middle class people. Inexperience, as I've suggested, age and uh, gender are key factors in understanding the pattern. Some more data, just to convince you further. This is English data, so uh, if we concentrate on, on this line here, and um, in terms of age, you can see this is for males. You can see this outstanding uh, rate per um, billions of kilometers of road use for uh, young males involved in um, Accidents. The, the pattern for, for females is a little bit more confusing. It's still marked for young females. Uh, it's confusing in, in the sense that uh, females age 70 and over uh, have a higher rate of accidents as well. But the pattern is still very much there. Okay, so what are we supposed to do about this? Well, there are various suggestions, maybe various solutions. One which is always popular is to improve the education and training of young drivers. This apparently is a very popular option uh, among parents. The sad thing is there's no evidence it makes any difference whatsoever to fatality rates. Uh, legislation and enforcement better enforcement, maybe of speed regulations. Okay, has a place, I'm sure, but some of the things which apparently uh, 
influence the, the negative kind of uh, rates of, of road accidents, there's no legislation for peer pressure, nighttime driving, so on. The other solution, uh, which is uh, proposed in many parts of the world, is GDL. So what is GDL? Well, it's kind of familiar to you. Uh, in a very weak form, we've had it in Northern Ireland for decades. Um, this is obviously an initial phase where you can drive only with a qualified driver under some supervision. An intermediate phase from learner to full license where you can drive unsupervised but you have to um, uh, fulfill certain conditions. But with GDL, the conditions can be quite strict. So no nighttime driving, no carrying passengers age, say, you know, 10 to 24, and no drinking of any alcohol, and so on and so forth. Well, do graduated driving license schemes work? It's difficult to get an estimate of this because they're all different. And to be honest, nobody knows what the effective ingredient in a GDL scheme actually is. Is it the nighttime driving? Is it the not carrying of the passengers? Or indeed something else? Uh, what the systematic reviews do suggest is that in all cases you get improvements, you get lower rates of casualty and injury. I've, um, I've sort of scavenged uh, one of the reports here mainly to show you the kind of geographical spread of the systems rather than the, the evidence. Uh, the reviews suggest then uh, anything from 4 to 60 percent decrease in casualties among newly qualified drivers. North Carolina, 47 percent reduction in nighttime crashes. 16 year olds. Michigan, 46% uh, reduction with the same age group. Iowa, 30% overall reduction in crashes. Uh, New Zealand, this is where GDL was first introduced in the 90s. And California, 44% to 37% respectively reduction in hospitalizations. Uh, the review suggests that teens generally feel less pressurized into driving in situations where they're not comfortable, i.e., with their friends and mates. Cochrane reviews, and there have been a few of them, only positive effects of GDL systems, all seemingly produce reductions in fatalities. But as I say, we don't know what the magic ingredient is. So this is a slide I borrowed from somebody else in the team. This is, uh, she's interested in introducing GDL in England and Wales, where it doesn't seem to uh, have any purchase whatsoever. So where are we now? Well, uh, uh, you have your learner period, uh, then your unrestricted driving across the top leading to tragedy uh, with graduated driving licenses. Um, uh, your, your period of learning is uh, extended and certainly controlled. Uh, once you get your license, you can't do it absolutely as you like. There are different kinds of restrictions and uh, the green outcome suggests in um, a better life for many. There is a proposal for uh, graduated driving licenses in Northern Ireland. Uh, it's, it's an odd mixture in some ways. For example, a lower provisional license age of 16 and a half, that runs counter to what I've already said about age of first license. Uh, I don't know why that proposal is there. Um, uh, mandatory minimum learning period 12 months for a provisional license, uh, post-test period two not one year, removal of the 45 mile an hour limit in the R plates. Um, the R plates are cosmetic because uh, we want uh, experience on motorways. N plates instead uh, to replace the R plates for two years, compulsory logbooks, I'm not sure what's in the logbooks. Uh, first six months, uh, can't carry young passengers 14 to 20, except immediate family members, without a supervising driver, uh, no nighttime curfew. So it's there in, again, uh, a, 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 a particular form. So why don't we just introduce GDL? Well, there are various kinds of objections which are real and need consideration, mostly civil liberties. Uh, difficulties in uh, young drivers in rural areas getting to work, getting to college, getting to school. Um, we know that uh, many young people, uh, certainly university students, work uh, for unsocial pay and unsocial hours, and uh, they, they'd have difficulty getting around. Affects educational opportunities, employment opportunities, and uh, interferes with social life. So there are lots of problems there. 
The team that um, I'm working with is interested in evaluating the introduction and consequences of GDL in Northern Ireland. Uh, I'll not go through the method here, partly because I'm not a statistician. Uh, interrupted time series analysis, uh, outcome measures, um, uh, the primary outcome casualty rates uh, for the number of licensed young drivers, look at outcomes and secondary impacts as well. The bit I'm interested in really is uh, understanding the impact of GDL on the lives of young people. Uh, Nicola used the word well-being. I'm not, not too keen on that, but uh, uh, essentially uh, what we're looking at is uh, how would a system like this uh, influence, impact on, affect the lives of um, the driving group that we are discussing. That, as I say, is why I really come into this uh, research uh, scheme. In your, uh, in your handout, you have this diagram. Sadly, uh, I snatched it out of the, uh, the research proposal we put in um, uh, at the National Institute. It's not all that clear, but the essence of it in the red box on the right is, uh, is uh, uh, the introduction of GDL. The blue box is the various kinds of outcome, the key uh, one of which is number one, uh, the um, the uh, changes in the uh, uh, in the injury rate, and the little white box is simply where we will get the evidence to um, assess and evaluate the introduction of any such scheme if it is actually introduced. I think the legislation is supposed to come in this year at some point, and that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>